Okay, so yesterday I posted this uh, list of reminders for anxious and depressed creatives and I just want to share this with all of you because the response I got to this was incredible and I'm really uh, surprised and amazed by the amount of people on my channel that are creative types and that uh, uh, struggle with anxiety and creative anxiety and creative perfectionism. Now I'm gonna say first and foremost you are more than what you make. This is point number one on this list that I saw online. And I think that's very much true. Like you should not associate your value or your worth with what you make. It is not a reflection of your worth or how much you value to society. It is a reflection of and a one expression of and one form of you, nothing more, nothing less. Your productivity does not determine your value. So it's not how much creative you are that matters. It is not that you are consistently creative every day and that you always make something and it's always great. That is not what matters. It is that you are creative and that you are able to be creative and that you have a channel to voice your creativity. It is okay to do nothing sometimes. This is something I struggle with myself. I have lots of days where I am down on myself when I can't do anything and I can't create and it's hard to make a video and it's hard to write anything and I don't have any inspiration. And nowadays I am happy and content just opening up Witcher Tree or reading a book or watching a movie or doing something else to stimulate my creativity. I want to emphasize it should be something that stimulates your creativity. So if you are finding yourself anxious or tired or not prepared to do something, don't just mindlessly consume information, but consume things that make you feel good and that challenge you and stimulate you. So watch a documentary or open up some uh, interesting channel on YouTube or dig into some new theory or idea and uh, yeah, be okay with consuming something for a while and not creating or doing anything with it. Just learn for the sake of learning. Not everything you do has to result in a product. That's also very important. Not everything you create should be a product. Not every idea you have has to be acted upon. And that can always be something compulsive I recognize in myself. If I have an idea, it's like I must do it. And I should do it. And if I don't do it, I should feel guilty for not being able to do it. But not all ideas are meant for you. Sometimes you're just picking up random things on the radio frequency of creativity. Sometimes things just pop into your mind. And when an idea is not for you, just let it go and let it pass on to somebody else. If you can't do it, somebody else will. And uh, if this is not your idea, it's somebody else's idea. So also recognize which ideas are meant for you and which ideas are meant for somebody else. Not everything you do has to be important, significant, or even good. Something I used to struggle with as a creative type was what I thought was creative or important or awesome was often ignored. What I thought was shallow or superficial was often liked. So if people liked or appreciated something I made or wrote or shared, and I didn't like it, I would be very frustrated with that. And especially I would be frustrated if I shared something I really liked and I found really important, but nobody else did. But not everything you do has to be important, significant, or even good. Nothing you create has to mean something big. Some things can mean something very small and still, even if it's very small, it can still be very fascinating and very important and very positive. So also enjoy the creativity of the details, you know, the small tidbits, the small trivias, the small fun things, the fun facts, the great crazy additions that you put on something um, and uh, let that be what it is and be happy with that. Just as happy as you would be with the big picture idea that you had in itself. A lot of creatives get stuck on the bigger ideas and forget how important the small ideas are. You can make things just for yourself. So that means I don't share everything I make. I don't post every video I make. I don't share every article I write. In fact, I keep 90% of what I do to myself. So that means most of the things I do, you will never even see or hear about or know about. I don't share every thought I have in my mind. I don't believe everything I have in my head is worthy to be shared. And some things are good enough to make me laugh, but they might not make anybody else laugh. Uh, you wouldn't understand. No, it's just um, learning to 
do things for yourself once in a while as well. You can keep secrets for yourself, whether it's not posting some of your projects or not sharing your techniques. And this is also something I can struggle with, though I should explain this more, I should uh, share this better, or I should be more available, or I should be more out there, I should be better at interacting with the community. But I'm not so good with that, and uh, I do my best, and I should, um, I could always do more. But yeah, I should also be happy with the things I do share and the things I do make. Finally, you're allowed to say no. And uh, that means if somebody else uh, wants your help for brainstorming or creative purposes or to make something or design something for them, you can say no. Sorry, I can't do it. I don't have time. Or you can say I need some time before I can do it. I'm going to need a few weeks or I'm going to need a month. So you can take your time. You can say this is going to take quite a while, but I might want to get into it later. Yeah, that's interesting. But at the moment, I'm already swamped with other projects. And you're also allowed to rest. And that means, uh, yeah, don't go overboard and don't overboard your creativity. The creative process can be exhausting. When, you, when I have put together or implemented an idea I had in the real world, I can often end up feeling empty afterwards. You know, the process of taking something inside and sharing it and putting it to words and putting it in the world and giving it shape and form, it can really feel like like pulling something out of you and uh, that can also feel exhausting and overwhelming and you should give yourself a break after you've been creative you should give yourself a break and say okay i'm gonna do something else now or i'm gonna recharge for a bit or i'm gonna take some time to go watch some other channels or i should stop for a moment you know that idea that you can keep pulling and keep pushing and keep dragging things out and that there will always be something else hidden in the hat that doesn't work and your mind doesn't work that way. Your mind needs inspiration as much as it needs um, its creative process and your ideas. And nothing comes from out of nowhere. Things come because you have attuned yourself to a higher frequency. To me, I perceive introverted intuition as a radio. And that means I perceive it as something that's constantly picking up on signals from around the world. Something that's constantly picking up on ideas and giving you me input into things. You know, it can be I'm walking through days, um, doing things normally. I'm uh, watching the television, but really I'm not watching the television I'm, at all. Really, I'm not observing people at all. I look like I'm looking at something, but really I'm just trying to focus and to hear my own inner voice and I feel like I'm picking up on something and that I've got something in my head and something that is really interesting or something that's really valuable or curious or fascinating. So I try my best to tune out of environmental stimulation and to tune out of everything that's happening around me and to just go into myself and to see what it is and where it comes from and what it could become. And then I take that and then I form that and I give it a shape and I give it a purpose and I give it a form and I uh, see it implemented into some area or some idea or some tool or some WordPress blog or some YouTube video and uh, I see how it turns out. And honestly, the reason I have been able to keep going with my channel and with YouTube and with what I do for so long is because I've allowed myself to have fun with it. I have not gone crazy in my perfectionistic desire to make every video turn out perfect. I have not driven myself insane yet, hoping every video will blow up and go viral. I have not uh, uh, burnt myself out yet thinking that I have to post video after video after video after video, non-stop, non-stop. I have not uh, drained myself of all my resources uh, thinking I had to do something a certain way. I have given myself time, I've allowed myself my process, and that's what I think you should do too. I see potential in this community. I see a lot of people eager to start up creative projects, and I want to encourage you all, if you're thinking of starting up a YouTube channel about anything, or in particular about Myers-Briggs Type Indicator, or maybe about yourself, or maybe you're sharing some ideas, reach out to me, send me an email. And let me know about it. And uh, 
I'll do my best to see and read through it and uh, give you advice and help you out. I really enjoy seeing people pop up with new channels and I really like supporting new creators and uh, new channels, especially those that have other projects similar to mine and people that uh, are passionate about the same things I am. So let's connect and um, yeah, be in love with your own creativity and your own creative process. Thanks for watching and see you all in the next video.